What is life like here in Gaza? What is it like to be a 12 or 13 year old boy now in Gaza? It's very dangerous. It's, it's very, very dangerous. Why? Because uh, every day the airplanes are going uh, in the sky and uh, sometimes they may uh, bomb some places and I'm really scared that maybe the bomb can come on me. So you, By accident. Do you think that's every day? Yes. Yeah. Mohammed Shaaf's family had inexplicably moved to Gaza from Chesterfield. And what do they feel about the Israelis? Are they saying that because in the Quran you couldn't make an agreement with the Jews, that means the Jews could never make an agreement? Yes. Yes. Can you ask them whether they think there will be peace one day? Uh, no, not with Israelis. Impossible. Not with Israelis. There can no, be no peace with the Jews? There can't be any peace never. with the Jews. Never. We have, so how can there be peace? They don't want agreement. They, won't, they don't want peace. They were the cause of trouble in, in, in Germany, in uh, Spain, in Argentina, and in, in, in Russia, and uh, all over the world. They were. If there is a war or a coming war, the, the, the a Jew will be the one who urges the war to, to start, who breaks out the war. But the Jews were the cause of the trouble in, in Germany. In Germany. When? During the, before the reign of uh, Hitler. Don't you think that what happened in Germany was actually the Germans' fault? But they make trouble in Germany. They make troubles for the Germans, so they hated them and make them make troubles for them. Hardly surprising that the Israelis complain about how history is taught. And why, for example, is there nothing in the school books about the Holocaust? David Mr. Zabut can tell us. He chairs the Education Committee of the Palestinian Legislative Council. Well, um, my point of view is that the Holocaust was exaggerated from the Israeli uh, people in order to justify that. Why they are come to Palestine? Because they uh, were exposed to so and so and so. When people say that there may have been six million Jews killed in Europe in the Second World War, you think that this is not true? Not true, of course. Of course not true. We are sure of that. In Britain what we believe is that the Germans set up big concentration camps in which they killed hundreds of thousands of people and they killed thousands of people okay. every day in, in, the, uh, in the gas chambers. Um, do you know something different to that? We believe that they suffered, but not as they said. Yeah, the exaggerating the matter. We you know that it, it, what was happening, it happened for them, but uh, they are, it is exaggerated. Anyhow, even if it was true, what is our responsibility for that? Why they try to, 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 to come to, the, to Palestine and to kill the Palestinian people and make deportation for the Palestinian people? Why we have to pay the price? Why? What is our relation to that? Even if they were killed, all of them, it is not our responsibility. It is the responsibility of uh, Germany and Europe. Wrong, certainly. But is it such an impossible view to understand? Especially here in Gaza, where incursions by the Israeli Defense Force regularly leave a toll of bereavement and damage. It's the kind of place where you can believe nothing and anything. Gaza is the stronghold of Hamas, the Islamist organization which opposes the existence of the Israeli state, opposes the roadmap to peace and is a major sponsor of suicide bombings. Their political spokesman is the dour but likeable Aziz Rantisi. I was here to ask him about the Hamas Covenant, which claims that there's a Zionist plot to establish a mega Israel from the Nile to the Euphrates. And what's cited in the Covenant as proof? Our old friend, the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Uh, this document has been uh, uh, published, uh, I, I think, in Russia and uh, uh, discovered the uh, plans of uh, Jewish against not only Muslims but Christians and uh, the humanity. Does it matter to you that 
this document is widely believed in Europe to be a forgery, that it was created by a member of the Russian Secret Service in about 1905-1906. I was uh, hesitated to accept that document, but when we look what is going on here in Palestine, we can't say uh, it's uh, not uh, prepared from the Jewish themselves. On the long walk back through no man's land, I reflected. There was a staggering level of naivety. People knew nothing of European history and its lessons. Then there was the bitterness and misery of endless conflict. If conditions were different, I wondered, would we get such extreme manifestations of hatred? They are a little different here in Ramallah, on the West Bank, where Yasser Arafat built his headquarters. Normal life of a sort goes on, and outside the madness of Gaza, moderate voices can make themselves heard. A good place, then, to seek justification for the pictures of hate I'd seen at Palestinian Media Watch. When incitement to hatred is officially outlawed here, what on earth is it doing on Palestinian TV? Do you think that maybe such sermons should not be shown on official television? I think that uh, uh, at a time when Israel is occupying the Palestinian territories and uh, doing this daily massive killing of Palestinians, uh, I think that it's very difficult to blame the Palestinians no matter what they would say vis-a-vis -vis the Israelis. The proposition I was going to was that maybe circumstances ha and the last few years of uh, anger and hatred have had begun to create a sort of a, a change in the way in which peoples were describing each other. No, I am still uh, saying that most of this is out of hostility rather than racism. If there is a just peace, is it your view that images like that will simply disappear? I am sure uh, that uh, these kind of hostile uh, descriptions will uh, end if the Israeli occupation on the Palestinian people will end. But if Mr. Khatib is right about Palestine, how does that explain why there's so much anti-Semitism in the wider Arab world? The largest Arab state is Egypt. If you'd been there last year, you might have seen this, a TV drama series featuring the protocols of the elders of Zion. Just watch, if you will, a bit of this, an epic TV drama shown across the Middle East. It's called Horseman Without a Horse. It tells the story of the Arab fight against colonialism, set against the backdrop of a diabolical Zionist plot to establish world domination. Large chunks of the series featured the protocols of the elders of Zion. The same protocols forged in the 1900s, approved of by Hitler and quoted in the Hamas Covenant. The 41-part series caused a major uproar in Israel and America and was the reason I came to Egypt. It was made here. And now, no one was available to talk about it. During my trip to Cairo, I was accompanied at all times by two armed security guards and the affable Amin Muntaz of the government press office. All requests for interviews went through him. And Mohamed Soubi, the series producer and star, was, I was told, too busy. Anti-Semitism, Amin would later tell me, is a very sensitive matter. What was interesting was the identity of the one man prepared to talk seriously about Egyptian anti-Semitism. Chief political advisor and right-hand man to President Hosni Mubarak, Osama al-Baz. Just after the start of the Horseman series, he asked and got the President's permission to write a series of articles condemning Arab anti-Semitism. Why did you feel it necessary to write those articles? Uh, because I felt that uh, the Arab-Israeli dispute caused a certain distortion in the minds of many people both Arabs and Israelis about uh, each other and uh, because the Arabs were innocent about uh, what happened to the Jewish people in Europe